Hi, this is John Sowash, and in this video, I'd like to introduce you to Google Meet. Now, I'm recording this video on the week of the great coronavirus school shutdown, and I'm well aware that a lot of teachers across the United States and the world are preparing to transition from teaching in a face-to-face -to, -face to a virtual classroom for who knows how long uh, that could be. Google Meet is a wonderful tool for connecting with your students in real time, even if you can't be physically with them. Google Meet is very similar to Skype, FaceTime, GoToMeeting, WebEx, and many of those other video conferencing tools. One of the great benefits of Google Meet for schools that use Chromebooks and G Suite for Education is that Google Meet is already integrated into many of the other Google products used on a regular basis, like Gmail and Google Calendar. It also works very, very well with Google Classroom. In this video, I'm gonna introduce you to Google Meet, show you how to get there, how to set up a meeting, how to invite your students, and we'll take a quick look at some of the basic features of Google Meet itself. Now, everyone should have access to the regular version of Google Meet. Um, this is a tool that your school district can enable or disable. And Google is currently offering the premium features of Google Meet, which include the ability to record a meeting, have um, more viewers, uh, and a few other features. They're uh, giving everyone access to those premium features through July 1st, 2020. Now you don't need the premium features, but they do have some nice um, bonus things that you can definitely take advantage of. Those premium features must be enabled by your Google admin in order for you to use them. I'll put a link in the description to this video with instructions on how to enable uh, some of those features. Let's get started and set up a meeting. Now there's two ways that you can schedule a meeting with your students. The simplest and quickest is just to head over to meet.google.com. It'll go to a page that looks like this and you're just gonna click join or start a meeting. And uh, we're starting, we're creating one, so we're gonna give it, a, uh, give it a name. We'll call this biology nine, because that's what I teach, and click continue. And that'll dump us right into the meeting and we're ready to go. This gives us the preview. And as soon as I click join now, I'm live in uh, the Hangout itself. Now, this first screen, this card that you see right here is very important. It gives us a couple of uh, important pieces of information. First of all, this is the meeting nickname, which our students can use to join. If they go to meet.google.com, type in biology nine, it would dump, us in, dump them into this particular meeting. Now, that's not how I recommend you get your students into the virtual class with you. I recommend that you use the unique URL to the meeting itself. So that right there, by typing that in, you'll be able to join my session. You can post that link in Google Classroom, send it via email, remind, however you communicate with your students, just get that link to them and they're in. Now Meet does support conference calls or call in So if your students aren't in front of a computer, don't have internet access, they can actually use that phone number to dial in and join the meeting. Now they won't be able to see anybody, but they'll still be able to hear the conversation. The third option uh, for getting your students into the meeting is by going down here to add people and typing in their email addresses. Now that's fine if you've got one or two students who are joining you, but if you've got a class of 30, I doubt you're gonna to wanna to sit there and type in 30 email addresses. So again, I primarily almost always use that link to get people to join uh, the meeting. Now it's important to know that when, you're, when you send them that link, they would be joining as participants, not just viewers, they would actually be able to talk, appear on camera, um, and interact with you. We'll talk about live streaming um, in a separate video. Now that's the first way, that's the first option to get students into the meeting. Just meet.google.com, create the meeting, and you'll get this information. There is a second option that you can consider, and this is helpful if you're scheduling the meeting in advance, and that is by uh, to use Google Calendar. So this is my calendar. Let's uh, pretend I wanna schedule a meeting for um, Tuesday the 24th. I'm just gonna click there. I'm gonna say virtual session. Now you're not gonna see the options on this screen. I'm gonna go ahead and click on more options and that'll give you me the hangout uh, meet options. So there it is, add conferencing. So this will add a video conference link 
to my calendar event. Now I can add my students as guests if I wish, um, similar to adding them to the meeting. I don't really want to uh, take the time to uh, do that in advance. Um, so just like we looked at earlier, there's the link to our meeting. I'm just going to copy that and put that in Google Classroom or uh, wherever my students can access it. It really makes no difference. You can create your meeting uh, links in Google Calendar. You can create them in meet.google.com, whichever is more uh, convenient for you. Let's jump back into the uh, meeting and look at a few of the options uh, that are there. Now at the bottom of your screen, you're going to see the option to mute yourself. So that microphone icon will mute you. If it's red, that means it's muted. If it's white, that means it's uh, live. Um, uh, to the right of that is the hang up button. Don't uh, click that until you're ready to end the session. And then uh, to the right of that is the mute camera. So this is helpful if you need to sneeze, uh, grab something, if someone comes into the room, if you just want to hide your camera for a short period of time, uh, you can click uh, that to, to do it. This is also helpful if um, you have low bandwidth, or if your students are in an area with low bandwidth, um, by turning off the video of all but the presenter, um, it makes the hangout a little bit uh, more friendly for low bandwidth situations. Um, moving over to the right again, this is a pretty slick, um, relatively new feature. This is the live caption option. I'm going to turn that on. Um, Google has developed a technology that can recognize speech and transcribe that into text in real time. It's amazingly accurate and very slick. So um, you can close caption your meetings with virtually no effort at all. Um, it's also very helpful if students are watching the video in an environment where they can't have the audio up. Um, uh, they can actually read what's going on and then just see uh, what's happening as well. It's really a, a nice feature. To the right of the closed caption button is the present button. This is the option to present or share your screen with everyone. You can click entire screen and then um, whatever is on your screen will show up in front of everyone else. I'm going to have a separate video with which will give you some tips on uh, effectively presenting using Hangouts Meet. Up at the top, I want to direct your attention up there, um, a couple of helpful things. First, you'll see the number of participants in the, the session. So right now it's just me. If I click on that little people icon, um, you'd be able to see a list of all the participants. You can have up to 250 participants in a Hangout meeting. That's a lot of people. I wouldn't recommend it. So you shouldn't have any trouble getting you know, 10, 20, 30 students uh, in there. Now, when you have additional students listed here, their names will be listed. And if you put your mouse over their picture, you'll see the option to mute them. So if a student joins and they don't mute their mic, if there's a lot of background noise or feedback, you can hop into the uh, participant list and mute them uh, before everyone's ears, um, <laughs> uh, eardrums burst. Google Meet or Hangouts Meet has a chat feature. Uh, this is the live chat that everyone will have access to and um, it's a great place for students to ask questions and engage with one another while you're presenting and sharing with them. At this time you're not able to disable the chat feature. If you start a meeting you have chat as well. I recommend you keep it open so you can kind of keep track of what's going on um, during your live sessions. When you're done with your meeting, you can go ahead and uh, just click the hang up button down at the bottom. That'll close the call. You can reuse the same link. So if you sent out a link to a virtual um, uh, classroom to your students on a Monday, you can reuse that same link on a Friday. It doesn't actually expire uh, when you end the meeting. That's a quick overview of Hangouts Meet, how to set up a meeting, how to invite your students, and some of the basic features uh, that it offers. Click some of these other videos if you'd like to learn more.